What's a dark part of American history that doesn't get enough attention? The murder of Mary Turner. Mariah's husband, Hayes, was lynched by a mob of white people in 1918 in southern Georgia, after Mary, 8 months pregnant at the time. Publicy denounced her husband as murder. The mob turned to her and wanted to her teach her a lesson. Uh, she escaped, but was captured the next day and hung upside down from her ankles. They cut her stomach open and the child fell out. Started crying. And one of the members of the mob stepped on its head. Then they shot her a few hundred times. The mob killed 13 people. None of the members of the mob were ever charged. May 1918 lynchings. HTTPS. N. M. Wikipedia. Org slash wiki slash may underscore 1918. Lynchings. The Tuskegee syphilis experiment was pretty fucked up. African American men were told they would get free treatment. But instead were left untreated. Do scientists could study the progression of untreated syphilis. Those human zoos where people could go look at people of color in big cities like New York. The Native American boarding schools. Eugenics prior to WW2. Hitler obviously took it to a whole other level with his Aryan race. But it was widely believed across the world that sterilizing or euthanizing people with mental illnesses or birth defects would lead to a better, healthier society. Marty Glickman who was faster than Jesse Owens, not being allowed by the American team, Avery Bundich, to run in the 1936 Olympics, so as not to offend Hitler, that a Jew was the fastest man in the world. The numerous war crimes that the United States military has committed, but get buried and hidden away by American history for the sake of patriotism. An example, General Jacob H. Smith and his slaughter of tens of thousands of Filipino civilians during the Philippine American Uruwaro. His famous orders were to uh, uh, kill anyone over turn. Uh, his court martial was written off to preserve the honorable image of the American military, and he retired and lived out the rest of his life in Ohio, and was later buried in Arlington Cemetery. A lot of people think the Klan was mostly a southern thing. It wasn't. In the 1920s, Michigan and other Midwest states had quite a lot of Klan activity. It didn't end there. When I was growing up in 70s Michigan, Racism and segregation were still baked into the cake with redlining, and in the case of my hometown running any black family who tried to move in out of town. What really blew my mind was when we learned in school about the racism towards the Irish during the early 1900s. To me the most interesting part is that they were hired, with very low wages, to do jobs that people wouldn't send their slaves to do as it was too dangerous. Tulsa race riot of 1921 always stuck with me. Letting German and Japanese war crimes be forgotten in exchange for experiment results in WW2. We think it is wrong you tortured those people, but could we maybe see the results? Colonialism in a nutshell namely the Philippines and Hawaii come to mind for me first. Also the pardoning of Japanese war criminals and paying for Unit 731's data is a big dark stain. The presidential assassination that no one talks about. James A. Garfield he was I believe the 20th president. It is a really interesting story and the YouTube channel Sam Ornella Academy has a really good video on it. The year without a summer 1816. The Yerpushan of Mount Tambora block out a lot of sunlight. Lead to one of the darkest years in history. The 1973 Chilean coup d'etat. HTTPS. N. M. Wikipedia. Org slash wiki slash 1973. Chilean underscore coup underscore datat. Was our counter as original 9 over 11. Because it happened on September 11th. 1973. It was an absolutely despicable action. That led to the deaths of hundreds of thousands. The U. S. Government essentially funded the uprising of the most violent dictator Chile has ever seen. Named Augusto Pinochet. This happened following an extended period of social unrest and political tension between the opposition controlled Congress of Chile and the socialist president Salvador Allende, as well as the economic warfare ordered by US President Richard Nixon. This was a terrible world event that got overshadowed by another terrible world event. I am not saying the Twin Tower attacks were Renault horrible, they were absolutely awful and dreadful. However, it is important to remember both events and be aware of it. 
violence against African Americans in the post-reconstruction South is very well studied. However, the lengths by which honest-to-goodness white supremacists went to with their sexual violence against African Americans is truly, truly something horrifying. I understand why it isn't touched on too much before high school. And I also understand why it isn't discussed deeply in depth in high school either. But it's pretty ignored compared to the degree that it occurred. I was going to say treatment of Native Americans. But that's been stated already. So let's instead name the massacres of early trade unionists. The Ludlow Massacre comes to mind as one example from April 1914. But it was far from the only one. Pretty much everything related to Native Americans. What we did to them is totally downplayed and often justified as us being the stronger force who won the war. The destruction of Black Wall Street in Tulsa. Indian Removal Act. Americans push the Native Americans, Indians, out of their homeland, killing anyone who refused to leave. Americans claimed it was their God-given right to take whatever land they wanted. Natives would trade. And how treaties before this. It is sad. Mothra's Day. 1985. Philadelphia. 6221 Osage Avenue. Move Massacre. That the Nazis got the inspiration of the gas chambers from the US. The US put Mexicans coming into the US into a chamber, where they were put in a chamber, where gas was released. It was meant to cleanse them. But the Nazis decided to use a lethal dose of the gas. The US continued to use non-lethal gas chambers on Mexicans even after WW2. German internment camps. Largest one was in North Dakota. The Elaine massacre in Arkansas where about 200 black people were massacred. They don't have an official burial site, but there is a mound in a cotton field where those hundreds of bodies are, are said to be buried. A couple months ago I also just learned about the Chicago race riots, where black citizens in Chicago were attacked, and the city was in chaos for 10 days. Side note, I don't like calling it a riot, because I feel like that implies that both sides were guilty in participating, but black people were being attacked for merely existing, and they only really fought back but never started the fights. Both of these happened in 1919. There were multiple attacks on black people that year, but that is never discussed, and in a book of reports from the Chicago race riots, they work hard to put blame on both sides. Japanese internment camps. During the 70s the Uckler County Hospital staff were performing illegal non-consensual sterilizations on women after performing sections. This happened for at least a decade and left hundreds of women unable to bear any more children without them knowing. It took some women 5 years before someone told them they could no longer have children. Some of the women were as young as 23. It also mostly affected those in the Hispanic population who faced major social stigma for not having large families or more kids. During the same time period, two African American girls, 12 and 14 years old, were unnecessarily sterilized. They tried to claim consent despite the mother who signed the paperwork being illiterate. Fun fact, the Nazi party had a pretty hard hold in America up until their leader was arrested for tax evasion or something like that. Also pretty much all of WW24 Pock and women is pretty horrifying. Imagine being a woman who was learning to fly a plan to help your country, and having your fuel tank filled with sugar. Telling your superior, and despite the fact that your male coworkers tried to actually kill you, his response is we are just going to say you messed up, to not hurt moral. Or the case of the abuse of black men who wanted to fight in the US military during the time. Imagine being told to roll munitions from a train cart to a thing to transport them, and being to that there was no chance of an explosion happening. A few days after you started a train car explodes killing many, and deafening people for miles. Then a few days later being told, do this work or we are sending you to prison. Or of course the Japanese internment camp. Patriotic anti-Asian cartoons that the government pushed to reduce trust of the Japanese and removal of all your worldly possessions. Simply because the country that your family immigrated from attacked the US. Fun fact, the only state that the US government couldn't do this to the Japanese population in was Hawaii. Simply because the Japanese population was too high. American big stick policy in the Americas. They did a lot of fucked up shit down there. They would lead coups against democratically elected presidents to protect the banana companies. 
There were concentration camps for Japanese during WWII. They didn't kill anyone. But it was still terrible. All the awful stuff Columbus did. He punished people for minor crimes such as stealing food, by cutting off body parts, and selling them into slavery. He congratulated his brother for marching a woman naked through the streets and having her tongue cut out after she insulted their family. He dealt with the rebellion by dismembering the rebels and marching their mutilated corpses through the streets as a warning to the others. He was awful enough that the Spanish government who weren't exactly known for being a kindly and humanitarian organization had him removed as governor and imprisoned as punishment for his atrocities. Needless to say, he was let out after 6 weeks. Because he was rich and famous. Close bracket. Maybe that we turned back boatloads of Jews fleeing Nazi Germany then acted as if the Holocaust was the reason we fought the war. Keep this in mind while we do nothing as China runs their re-education camps. Pre-Columbian violence amongst the Native Americans. Among the Iroquois nations in the Northeast. Ada morning Wazo were practiced. Such conflicts involved raiding with the intent to capture prisoners, who were then adopted by bereaved families to replace family members who had died prematurely due to illness or war. The sexual abuses committed by service members in time of war. The Boston Massacre only killed 5 people and was used as propaganda. The lynchings in the South after the Civil War. I saw the memorial in Alabama. It's pretty horrific. Hitler's eugenics programs and laws initially came directly from U.S. Also, the U.S. was enthusiastically protecting its own white supremacy with little pushback all through WWII. The initial theories, research, decades of heavy pro-eugenic propaganda and resulting culture culminated in the 1927 Supreme Court ruling, allowing forced sterilization on the basis of undesirable genes. Hitler points to you. S. Policy in Mein Kampf. Celebrating the scientific methods of ethnic cleansing we've developed. Sir Francis Galton really started it all in the 1880s. Theorizing humans could be selectively bred for biological improvement of the species. Just like livestock. He concluded, among other things, that good genes are what made the upper classes upper class. Bad breeding could explain lower classes. And tracking those individuals their traits and genealogy. Scientists could identify the bad races responsible for lower quality humans in order to weed them out. Eugenics led the U.S. to crack down on immigration based on race, with preference given to superior ethnicities. Starting with the Immigration Act of 1924, Jews, for example, were identified as being of a lesser race than the Nordic, Germanic, and Anglo-Saxon breeding of the American Protestant upper class at the time. Generally a lot of blonde hair and blue eyes. Sound familiar yet? The Immigration Act wasn't revised until 1952. Its stated purpose was to preserve the ideal of U.S. homogeneity. Of course this means that all through WWII as Jews and other minorities were being persecuted through Europe because of their race. The U.S was actively locking them out for the exact same reasons. In the later 1930s, U.S. scientists were finally pushing back against eugenics as a reliable science, having realized genetics and inherited traits were a lot more complicated than originally thought. However, the forced sterilizations continued, actually becoming more frequent after WWII. Of course, minorities and poorer folk were targeted alongside those with disabilities, or those found immoral, as eugenic arguments became less admissible in court, the language used to argue, for sterilization shifted away from preventing the spread of bad genes, and became bad genes equals unfit parent. These forced sterilizations remained popular into the 1970s, until there was finally pushed back, when feminists pointed out black women were being sterilized at much higher rates for no reason other than race. Most states crack down, changing their laws, but it's still possible in some states for a judge to approve forcible sterilization on an individual. We like to forget this part of U.S. WWII history. Ironically, during the Nuremberg trials, when Nazi war criminals were charged with forced sterilization, among other things, their defense lawyer pointed to the U.S. 
S.O. laws and Supreme Court ruling permitting the exact same practices.